Happy and blessed feast day to all of you. I don't know how many, probably most of you sitting here right now, remember that in almost every Catholic household when I was growing up, there was this book called Butler's Lives of the Saints. You all remember that book? It was pretty much a ubiquitous book in Catholic circles. And we were all encouraged again and again to spend time reading about the different saints that were in the book. And there were even some children-like versions of it so that you could learn. And when I was first ordained, they even tried to revive a little bit of the excitement of the saints. They had these trading cards, like baseball cards, that they wanted the kids to get excited about. But it never really did catch on, unfortunately. It was a sad reality. But getting to know the lives of the saints was always a huge part of our tradition. Getting to know the saints more intimately was a very important part of our own formation as good Catholics. And the reason for that is, is because their lives can become an inspiration for you and for me. See, I've heard too many All Saints homilies that want to proclaim you saints. But this isn't about you. I know your narcissistic side wants it to be all about you, that All Saints Day is all about us, but it's not. It really is not. And I want to be clear about that because you have to be dead to be named a saint. And since you're all sitting here alive, you're still a work in progress. And that's the part I'd like to emphasize for you today is to remember that you are a work in progress. Many times when I'm talking to somebody who may be struggling with certain spiritual issues or going through certain trials in their own life, trying to combat certain sins or deal with certain things in their lives, I do remind them that Christianity is not just a vignette. It's not a moment where you just take a snapshot, boom, you're done. You know, St. Paul has his conversion experience, but then he goes off and preaches for many decades following. And each time you see him in the Acts of the Apostles, he's grown. And when you read the letters that he wrote, he's grown in his theology and his understanding of his relationship with Jesus Christ. So too is the same for you and for me. We're not there yet. And so we have to keep going and keep going. And when we stumble, we learn from the saints. I mean, how many of the saints? They stumbled along the way. And yet they still pick up and they continue the journey. This should be an inspiration for you and for me. This should be one of those things where we do make that clear understanding in our minds that striving for holiness is important and becoming a saint when we die, not before, becoming a saint is possible. Now, I remember reading the lives of some of the saints, and if you were like me, when you read some of them, a few of them were pretty crazy. They had their flair, they had their way. I mean, like we look at St. Francis of Assisi, St. Francis of Assisi, by some modern standards, might have been called a nut because of his zealousness for the gospel. When he underwent his conversion, when he heard that San Damiano cross speak to him, when he embraced the leper at the gate, he then had this realization that he was being called to poverty. Now, how many people today go from riches to rags? I said it the other day in a, in a weekend homily. We don't hear too many of their stories unless we look at the lives of the saints. He literally went into the center of Assisi, took off all his clothes, renounced all possessions, and embraced sister poverty. Could you imagine the news reports today? Think about it for a second. And yet he has become one of the dearest saints in our tradition. You can show a picture of St. Francis to just about anybody in the world, from any religious background, from any part, and they'll probably go, oh, yeah, that's St. Francis of Assisi. The same with like St. Mother Teresa. You can take a picture of her and show her to just about anybody. Oh, yes, St. Mother Teresa. They lived what they believed. They lived the gospel message. Now, I'm not expecting any of you here to renounce all your possessions today. I'm not expecting any of you sitting here to, you know, just get rid of everything in your life and go live in the streets. That's not the point. But the point is that sometimes we need to be a little bit more radical in our approach to the faith. Embracing the faith the way the saints did. Living the faith the way the saints did. Going forth from here with that 
pledge within our hearts to say, I may not be finished yet, but I do know my Lord and Savior. And in knowing my Lord and Savior means that I know I am called to holiness. And a big part of living that holiness is sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. St. Francis still shares the good news. St. Mother Teresa still shares the good news, even from beyond the grave from the hallowed halls of heaven. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is for you and for me. Just like young children, you know, when we made those saints cards, we were hoping that they would be like what sports figures were for them. How many kids get excited over a particular sports figure and want to emulate that person? We were kind of hoping the same thing when we made those saints cards. We should want to emulate their zeal. We should want to emulate their holiness, their prayerfulness. We should want to emulate their love for the gospel so that we do go forth and share the good news. Blessed are you when they persecute you, Jesus just said. And let's face it, I think a lot of us get scared because we do get a little persecuted, don't we? But so did the saints. Go and get to know the saints. If you haven't looked at the lives of the saints in a while, go and get to know them. The church made this particular day on the calendar. It's one of the more ancient feasts that we celebrate because in the early church, there were many who were witnessing, many who were even dying for the faith, so many that they couldn't name them all. So what did they do? They just made one day with, they said, we're just going to have a catch-all. This is for all of those who have gone before us who were living the lives of saints who now reign before the throne, as we heard from the book of Revelation. My dear brothers and sisters, Today is a blessed feast because it reminds you and it reminds me that we are to be different. We are to be set apart. We are not to be of the world, but we live in the world as followers of Jesus Christ. Be inspired by the lives of the saints. Pick some of the saints and go learn more about them. If you haven't had the opportunity, go learn about some of the great saints of our tradition. Go learn more about what made them different and then ask yourself, is there anything in this that could apply to me? And then try to do it. I love this particular feast because it's that feast that says, yes, God has triumphed. Yes, God has overcome. And yes, and most especially, the grave is not the end. The grave is not where we stay. There will be that resurrection. And so we all strive to be one day with those saints who are now around the throne of God. I hope that's your desire and I hope that's what brings you here this morning because that's why we are Catholic. God bless you.